was heavy installation, trying to get uh, get all the different personnel groupings, formations, plays in that we might use over the course of the season, so they're at least exposed to it early on. And then uh, now we've pretty much finished our the bulk of our install, so now the emphasis is on the final details, the repetition, the ex running the same plays over and over execution, now executions of the premium, the fine details, the things that really make the difference between uh, high precision in your offense or just being generally right. So that, that's that's the where the emphasis is turned, focusing on the little details that, that, that make the plays go. How would you assess, I guess, Blake Burrell so far? Uh, how is he performing? Uh, Blake's had a real good camp. I, I've been, been very pleased with him. He's uh, got a great command of the offense. Uh, I think he's maturing and developing. and. Uh, it shows on the field is mostly most of the time his decision making is, is right on where it needs to be. Uh, st still have a mental lapse here and then. That, that's things we're working on, and, and the fact that you know, I talked to him about now you've got to you know you've got to be ready to go before if it's seven o'clock game you can't show up at seven thirty. You know, where in the past he's had the luxury of kind of having a chance to study what's happening on defense and a chance to assess what's going on and then actually get into the game. He doesn't have that anymore. Now he's got to be ready to go uh, right, from, right from the opening kickoff where he's performing at a high level. So I think that's his next challenge in making the step from being a backup you know, into a starting role. I guess we'll, we'll find out, obviously, a few weeks when the games get going, but just kind of look back at where he was at the end of last season. Obviously, he was finishing and doing well in those games. How much, how much of a jump do you think he's made since that time? Well, you know, he was pretty good. He was, you know, for a redshirt freshman, I mean, he was throwing just under 70% completions, which was right up there with the best in the country. His pass efficiency rating had he had enough. I think it was at 153, which would have put him up in the top, probably top 15 or so in the country. So, uh, he was very efficient with what he did. Now it's, you know, can he sustain and keep improving? I think what I've seen so, thus far in the preseason, yeah, he's got a much better better knowledge of the entire offense. And uh, not only does he know his job, he knows all the positions on the offense. You know, I've seen him get guys lined up right if they might have missed a line, you know, pre-snap. And he's got a great understanding of protections and so forth. So I think he's maturing and developing as a quarterback, knowing that he's still young in his career. He's you know, just a sophomore. Uh, so he's, uh, I think, moving along in a, in a real positive direction. Tyler Gabbert, uh, just kind of talk about him and what you see on him in this week and a half, I guess. Well, Tyler, you know, it's a little slower for him, though, in that one, it's a new language for him, a new system, completely different terminology. Uh, he had been under center, you know, at Missouri. It's all shotgun offense, and most time in his high school, so he's a adjusting and taking snaps under center some. And then, uh, you know, for Tyler, he hasn't played football since spring of 11. You know, that was his redshirt freshman uh, spring season at, at Missouri. He left there and he didn't play football all last year. So this he's been away from it for a year and it's a process. I see talent. Uh, I think he is instinctive. He does some things naturally without having a great grasp of the offense right now and has a command about him. And it's just going to take a lot of time and reps with him and, and getting him uh, learning where he can function in our offense. You know, I guess when we talked to you in spring, obviously you were excited at, over the talent you had at running back, the different options between Latavius, Storm, and Bryn. Just kind of talk about that that group and the, and the potential they have there. Oh, well, that's probably backs. that's probably as good a group as I've been around in, in my entire career. I mean, you know, three deep, uh, it's pretty good backs, you know. And, and, uh, Obviously, that's the strength of our offense. We've got to play to our strengths, and you know those guys need to have the ball in their hands because they're, they're explosive. And uh, you know, Bryn's a proven guy. Uh, I see signs of him getting closer back to where he was in '09, the form he had, which was my first year, chance to see him play as a sophomore. And of course, uh, Tay's been a very productive player for us, and now the emergence of Storm. You know, after being ineligible. I mean, he, he does some things that turns your head, you know, he's just got a great combination of size, power, speed, and good hands. So uh, that's a pretty good pretty good tandem of running backs back there. Uh, so obviously uh, uh, they'll be very, very intricately involved in our offense. 